Hello, this is Peaceful Anarchism on the Voluntary Virtues Network every Thursday at 1 p.m. And you could also find me on the Conscious Resistance uh, YouTube channel and Conscious Re Resistance website. So today we have Benny Wills, who is the co-creator of Joy Camp uh, YouTube channel and is a truth-telling comedian. So, Benny, <laughs> so, so tell me how you got into all of this, um, you know, I guess, uh, you know, poking fun at current events with comedy. Sure. Uh, well, let's see. Um, starting at a very young age, I loved being a performer. I decided that's what I wanted to do with my life when I was four years old. I just loved uh, making people laugh and entertainment in general. And at a certain point in my development, I became very aware of, um, I guess, lies I was being told about uh, the world we're living in and about the, about history and then um, I don't know and then I struggled with it for a long time not knowing what to do because I wanted to participate in you know help in the awakening of the planet but activism didn't feel right for me uh, and meanwhile I was still studying to be a professional actor and then one day Kevin who's the other creator of Joy Camp with me we made a video called Conspiracy Theorist PSA which was making fun of the 1950s propaganda public service announcements. And we realized, like, immediately that that's what, was our, what our purpose was. We were blending our sense of humor with our ability to make films and perform, entertain with um, the knowledge that we had been accruing and understanding. And so we realized that the truth movement, quote unquote truth movement, whatever you want to call it, lacked a sense of humor big time. Um, and rightfully so, because it's really serious stuff, obviously, like dealing with, um, you know, a global conspiracy and debt based slavery. Like, that's not funny. But we, you know, Kevin and I were always able to laugh, like, as our way of release with each other. And we realized how significant that was and how this movement really needed some place for people to go to, to not only let off steam, but also for people who are already awake to share with their friends who they had been having trouble communicating with because when people are laughing, they're much uh, more willing to listen. So we realized how absolutely important what we could do, uh, what we were doing could be. Uh, so that's what happened. <laughs> Long story short, we were, we just, it was just a marrying of all worlds and it all synced up at the right time. So, so who are your uh, your influences like along like was there any books that you read or like any comedians or any any personalities that really influenced you to yeah man to that's this? a good question. great question and i never I, I never get all the one i never get all my influences one answer because uh, <laughs> there's so many but of course george carlin and bill hicks were huge for me and for kevin um and then growing up i mean i love i grew up with the simpsons simpsons were a huge influence on our sense of humor both of us and then um, sketch comedy, like Monty Python and Kids in the Hall and groups like that, as well as um, the playwrights that I, I mean, I was just, I'm a student of the theater. Like, I studied theater for 10 years and did 55 plays in a row before I started to be a wow. truth comedian, so to speak. So people like Shakespeare, huge influence on me and just the, you know, the, the levels that he was able to um, reach and like the layered, man, this brilliant writing as well as my personal favorite, Samuel Beckett, playwright, huge influence on me, nihilist, you know, but his thing, his theme was always at the end of the day, like, what else do you have but laughter? And that was a huge influence on me. Um, so yeah, those are my primary influences. Awesome, yeah, and I also noticed, I think, on the Joy Camp um, About section, you guys have the quote by Oscar Wilde. Oh, right. Right? That's if you, want to, if you want to tell people the truth, make them laugh, otherwise they'll kill you. Yeah. yeah. I, I tell that to everybody I meet, and which is one of the reasons why, you know, in my in my articles I'm always posting political cartoons, and in my in my even in my video podcast where I'm just talking, I'm, I'm trying to make it as humorous as possible, because yeah, you're right. These are dark and gloomy topics that can get easily depressed depressing for people, and what's the use of that? Like if we're just depressing people. <laughs> That's yeah, kind of productive, right? Exactly. And people who aren't who aren't willing to listen to this information or listen to the counter uh, point of view, 
they won't, no matter how, you, how loud you yell, they're not going to listen. But when you make them laugh, they're, they're, all their defenses go down. Their walls are immediately broken, and they are more receptive to the information. Oh, yeah, definitely. That's, yeah. that's one thing I realized when I, um, I studied comedy. Um, like, I, did a, I did, took a comedy class with my, my brother, um, like, uh, what was that, four years ago. And <clears throat> I think it was like an eight-week comedy class. And it was wonderful. You know, I learned it's amazing how powerful comedy can be when you're talking to complete strangers. <laughs> you know, <laughs> they, they can trust you if you can make them laugh, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you have absolutely. their trust. <laughs> well, we, we had, um, oh gosh, I, sh I, I should really memorize this one, this one comment we had once because it, it, it sums up what we do so well. A woman commented once on a video, finally, I can, finally something I can post on my Facebook wall without being attacked by my friends. And that about sums up everything that we're striving to achieve with Joy Camp and what we're already achieving. I mean, that's, that's the goal, something that people, we can, so we can bridge the gap between people who don't want to listen. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's so difficult. It's difficult that it, as it is to talk to people about this stuff, you know. So if you can edge in there some jokes every once in a while, yeah, it definitely makes the I – think, I think there's a proverb that says if you're going to send an arrow through the heart, Make sure you tip it with honey first. <laughs> mm. <laughs> right? That's good. Well, yeah, and there's also an, there's also an element of finesse. I mean, because when I was going through my like massive download of information awakening, I was not knowing how to communicate with people, and because it, it felt so important to me, I was going, I was so passionate in the conversations I was getting into, and I was getting into a lot of arguments, and I couldn't believe that people didn't want to hear what I had to say. So having to like rethink and reevaluate how to communicate, um, people for whatever reason don't like being taught anything by another individual. They don't want they, it's an ego thing. Like people don't want you to replace the information that they hold sacred. They want to feel like they do, they're doing it on their own. So what we try to do with Joy Camp also is not get preachy. We don't want to tell you like, hey, this is our this is how we feel about this issue. We're just showing you that it's an issue, mm -hmm. so that hopefully the person who's receiving the information, who's watching the video and laughing, will take it and laugh and then look it up on their own. So if we make a video about chemtrails, for instance, where we're just calling attention to chemtrails. We're not saying necessarily that this is, you know, that they are what they are this one horrible bad thing. We're just presenting the issue so that they hopefully will do their own research and come up with their own conclusions. Yeah, so you so you're basically providing the impetus for a person to go out and investigate themselves, right? Right, exactly. We're giving it to them on a platter, saying other people aren't going to want to touch this subject, but we're touching it, and we want you to know about it and now come up with your own you know, idea and opinion and conclusion or whatever about it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well said. I mean, uh, yeah, a lot of these topics can be taboo. Like, you can see that when... When you approach, you know, the, I think uh, my wife always yells at me whenever we have a, 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 you know, dinner with family. She says, two things you don't talk about at dinner. Politics, religion. <laughs> right? Right. The two things that we probably need to talk about the most. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Because, because everybody gets so incensed and angry when you talk about those things. But perhaps that anger is as a result of ignorance. You know, they really don't understand what's going on. And so they just get angry. You know, it's the Muslims. The Muslims are they're the ones that are taking away our freedom, you know. It's the, uh, it's, it's, it, 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 it's the Mexicans. The Mexican immigrants are coming in here, stealing our jobs. <laughs> yeah, it's like, no, it's actually the power structure <laughs> telling you to hate your neighbors teaching us to be afraid of each other. Yeah, They're yeah, the ones, yeah. we're, we're all getting screwed by the same master. Yeah, yeah, so, so um, I mean, the way, the way I approach these conversations um, is I don't really tell people, like I remember you said uh, you don't like labels, right? So, yeah. so you know, I, I would consider myself an anarchist volunteerist or an anarcho-capitalist or anything like that. But when you say those things, um, for most people, it doesn't mean anything except the word anarchist. That can provoke a lot of emotional baggage <laughs> coming out of people. So usually, yeah. the way I broach these topics is I talk about economics because that is something that most people can relate to, right? It's right. like if you're a business owner, you know, um, you're going to be affected by certain laws and regulations, right? You're going to be affected by the increase in the money supply, right? So what is the Federal Reserve? What is its function, right? How many people know what the Federal Reserve is, right? Mm -hmm. So that's that's the approach that I take it, 
you know and Absolutely. and and if you get if you can come at it from comedy even better yeah and i mean in my for, i mean first of all i i think that my day to day interactions my one on one encounters are just as significant in you know healing the planet as my videos are i mean if i'm not if i'm not walking my own talk so to speak then i'm not really helping anything and when it comes to that like i don't really necessarily use comedy i just use kindness and I ask questions and I find that itch in a person because everybody has an itch. Everybody feels like they're getting screwed by the system in some way. So my goal is in a kind way and in a lighthearted and sometimes funny, I suppose, charming way, get them to understand that that itch is connected to a much larger overall problem. Mm -hmm. You know, every, 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 little, every, every little thing that's screwing an individual is connected to a larger problem, right? Because the system itself is flawed. And that's, to me, just as significant. That art of communication is just as important as, you know, the videos that I make. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And, uh, you know, I, I realized, like, um, I, I was thinking about, you know, if, let's say, there was some kind of economic collapse, right? And the power structure just falls and, and you know, chaos for a short moment, what's going to happen, you know? And I, and I think about what skills do I have that are valuable in a society? Mm. Like, do I have valuable skills to offer people, right? Because apparently, because I guess if you're working for the IRS, you can't, you don't really say you have valuable skills to offer yeah, people. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. So I think being able to make people laugh is a timeless skill. You know, everybody, you know, people always want to laugh, right? They always want, you know, there's never going to be a time where people are not going to want to laugh, right? <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. People, yeah. people well, flood into, you know, comedy clubs Friday night, Saturday night after a week of hard week of work, you know, and, and it's just, it's just great atmosphere because people come together and with just, they just want to laugh. That's it. <laughs> it's very simple, you know? And it's yeah, they want to relax, have a good time and feel like they're a part of a larger group that's also... You know, with a common with a common goal to have fun and yeah or share like you said laughter and you know that's and that 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 sort of pursuit is the only pursuit really that's like i don't know that's what we all want that's what everybody wants money is just something they've told us we want but what we really want is just to feel good and have fun and you know connect with other people and to laugh and to love and to be listened to and be touched and all that like that's what's important in life you know not not who has the most money so who can buy and own the most stuff like that's what we've been taught but you know that won't fill the void in your soul no matter how much you acquire no matter how much how much stuff you buy cars you drive you know you're still going to want to be loved you know yeah politics to me is um is the art of dividing people you know based on fear right fear Wait fear of your neighbor like fear you know be afraid of the rich people be afraid of the poor people be afraid of the black people white people right. you know it's yeah. always some other group of people that we should fear right. th that are causing all the problems right yeah divide and conquer absolutely you know and and so and w when you're focusing on other people it's easy to become distracted at you know the root cause because right th those are they're considered the branches right as uh, yeah. Henry David Thoreau, he said, you know, for a thousand people hacking at the branches, there's one hacking at the root. <laughs> and, the, and, and the root is what needs to be hacked. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. And, yeah. and what's crazy is that those people who call attention to the root problem are usually, you know, um, ostracized or vilified by their peers <laughs> for doing so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Even if you're, what is that quote? Even if you're a minority of one, the truth is still the truth. Gandhi, yeah. Yeah, and there's also that other one, uh, the three phases of truth. Yeah, yeah, I think that's also Gandhi. Or, or, or Schopenhauer. Yeah, first. Yeah, Schopenhauer, that's what it is. All truth passes through three stages. First, it is ridiculed. Second, it is, viol it is violently opposed. And third, is it, it is accepted as self-evident. I mean, that's, that's exactly what it is. There's resistance at first, but then people will come along. They will get it. Yeah, yeah, it's hard yeah. To be like, oh, their their BS, their belief systems. Yeah, you know, you know what's funny about societal change is that it doesn't even take like a large majority of the population to critically think and analyze this stuff for there to be massive change, right? Because it's always a small percentage of people, ten percent, maybe max twenty percent, of really passionate um, thinkers that are willing to, you know, sacrifice stuff to change the course of human history. And then everyone else 
who doesn't really want to think about this stuff just goes along for the ride, right? Absolutely. Yeah, it's like a trend. I mean, first of all, I think that people, majority of people are good people. They're good. Whether or not they're awake or not, they're still decent, good people. They want the same things that everybody wants. They want to feel happy and secure and happy and loved and all these things we just talked about. Um, evil is an anomaly, but people are just misled. People are right now stuck in a rhythm, a routine of following these rules that are basically being given to us by evil forces. All they need is to, be, to have their, sh their focus shift from that to good leadership or you know, something along those lines, the good energy, let's say, and everyone, then the paradigm shifts. They don't need to necessarily wake up. They just need to, you know, look from, they're looking left right now, they need to look right. And then everything changes, like the wind, mm. like the wind changing direction. Yeah. I really feel that. You yeah, know? I fundamentally believe also that people are, uh, you know, good natured. You know, when people go out to vote, they're, they're voting because they want people to be good, right? When you when they pass when they vote to pass a law or regulation, they want people want companies to act in a good way. You know, you know who who actually votes for a legislation that produces more, you know, um, oil destruction in the Amazon rainforest? <laughs> Nobody, right? So right. we all have this desire to improve the world. The problem is, you know, what do you do? What methods do you use to? Um, after that, you know, to try to to try to implement that, right? And, and if you're using government, the most you know aggressive, powerful, violent institution <laughs> that exists right. on the planet. Yeah, right. O obviously, we have to stop asking for change from within because you just it's not going to happen. I mean, this is a, it's a it's a structure that's built on corruption. You can't. It's inherently bad. You cannot get that to change. You know, it has to start from without outside of that. Yeah, the the um, there's a quote that I like, which is um, um, sending in a good man to reform the state is like sending in a virgin to reform a, the whorehouse. <laughs> yeah, well, that, I think that was my, and I, I mean, I, I don't know, I don't know what kind of audience you have, and I may, I don't know if people take this how you will, but like that was the that was my my whole problem with that Occupy movement a few years ago, is while people's hearts were in the right places, right. But they were sitting there, they were occupying space, asking for the people who, and who, who, who make the rules and force the rules to change the rules. So they're saying, we are upset, we are pissed off, but we want you to fix it for us. <laughs> you who's already screwing us. <laughs> that kind of movement's dead in the water because people are they're basically, they, they don't want to take the actual responsibility of saying, you know what, you're out now. You're out as leader. We, you have failed us. You were supposed to be a public servant and you were failing us, so you're out. But instead they're saying, hey, you're fucking us over. I'm sorry, I don't know if, you, if I can That's say right. that. no Screwing us over. <laughs> you're screwing us. But can you now change that? Can you just be a nice person now? And that doesn't change anything. You know, like I said, the, the system is corrupt. It must come from the people. The change must come from the people. But, but then there's those people who say, we are the government, you know? We elect these people, right? So they're representing us, so they are us, right? So therefore, by that logic, the, the Jews that were, that were killed in the Holocaust committed suicide, right? Because they are the government, <clears throat> right? <laughs> I don't know if I can get my mind around that. If you, if you, follow, if you follow that logic to, to its conclusion, you know, if there is no separation between us and government, then whatever government does has been sanctioned by the people, right? If a police officer beats a person senseless for holding a leaf, um, you know, then that we consented to that because we are government. <laughs> mm. If the banks bail out, you know, the uh, if the government bails out the banks, you know, trillions of dollars uh, with stolen taxpayer money, we did that, <laughs> right? It wasn't the it wasn't the bureaucrats, it wasn't the politicians. We did that, <laughs> which is fundamentally flawed. You know, we did not right. do that. Of course, but, we did not do that. Like we pressed a button and voted for a guy to go in there and after he went in there is absolutely no accountability after that we have no right. we have no say in the laws of regulations right, right? yeah i mean the, the the fine apathy right i mean i when i because I, I don't vote and whenever the, whenever i go to the grocery store or something during voting season and they're trying to get me to register and i say i don't vote i get i get met with such like <laughs> offended uh, responses and they're like oh well how's apathy working out for you <laughs> i'm like you you calling me apathetic because you're deciding to vote one day out of the year. You're putting one day out of 365 days to say, I'm going to make a difference today.
But change has to come every day. You know, you have to be working towards something. And you're calling me apathetic? Me who's actually trying to make a difference, but yet, because I'm not voting in this corrupt system, somehow I'm apathetic, you know? <laughs> it's like, it's, it's, like, crazy. Uh, it's crazy. like, it's like if you're playing somebody in Monopoly, right? And, and they're, uh, you know, printing their own money constantly. Everyone else can't, right? One person can print their own money. Would you continue to play with them? <laughs> <laughs> that's a great point. That's actually that's a great point. You and know, that's, that's the system we're living in, right? How can you how can you possibly compete with an entity that can just you know print up billions of dollars at will and yep. and obtain the value from that money by stealing it from those people that already p possess you know other currency? <laughs> right. How do yeah. you compete with that? <laughs> It's just madness. Yeah, exactly. It's a great point. It's just madness. They're creating. Yeah, there's no. There's no such thing as money. It's just numbers on a screen. It's just. It's not even real anymore. Yeah, the, the Federal Reserve is how I actually got into all this stuff. I started researching about that and precious metals, and uh, you know, learning about the economy that way and the history of the Federal Reserve, how it got started, and everything. And it's mm -hmm. really fascinating, you know, because. When you really study the Federal Reserve, it's uh, it's kind of chilling, <laughs> to, to say the least. Yeah. <laughs> like um, you know, the, just just think about it. the Federal Reserve was created to protect the value of the currency, right? And so from 1913 until today, currency has been destroyed. The value of it has been destroyed at least 98 percent, right? So how how well is it doing <laughs> protecting the value, the value of the currency? I know. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's it's so I mean, it's so inherently corrupt at every level, and it's so obvious. That's that's what's something that I'm I always struggle with is how obvious it all is. And once you get to a certain point, you know, I, I feel like I'm I'm like Neo in the Matrix. You know, like I just I just see it now. I just see the tactics and I see the game being played. And to me, it's so not only is it obvious, it's like insultingly obvious. It's like they know I know. It's like they know I can see it, but yet everybody else. There's like no in between. It's like you either see it or you don't. You know, there's like no middle ground. Mm -hmm. That's like, if I could capture that in a video, that would be amazing because that's something that baffles me. Like that, just that difference. You either see it or you don't see it. Yeah, I, I think I think uh, when people start learning about this stuff, there there's so so first it's like you're shocked, right, at what you just found out, and then you're kind of fearful that you know what is this huge overarching government that can that can um <clears throat> you know create any law at will can create any amount of money at will and can violate anybody's civil liberties at will you know <laughs> confiscate anybody's home anybody's savings at will um that's what we have to live under and and so you know it's understandable for people to be fearful and you know fear the apocalypse you know economic collapse and when everything gets destroyed what are we going to do we're going to just everything's going to descend to chaos it's going to be mayhem and everything and it's just easy to be fearful. So, and I think the next step after that is, you you come out of that, and you realize that no, you know, it doesn't have to be like that, right? You know, people are still good, even though if there's no government, people are still going to trade, people are still going to raise their kids, and still going to, you know, <laughs> go on with their lives. <laughs> right, life will go on. It it just means that there's not going to be a leech on our backs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're gonna have to take some self responsibility. Like, you're not gonna be able to just go to the grocery store and take, you know, and take uh, food for granted. You're gonna have to realize that food comes from a source, and it has to do with cycles. And you know, you can't just. That's why that's people are afraid of the apocalypse, is because they don't know how to live. We're so detached from nature and reality. Like, mm -hmm. everything works in cycles, mm -hmm. and we are so removed from that. We're afraid of what it would be like to not have this system that provides these things for us. You know. And the other thing that my, my wife was fearful when I was studying this stuff and telling her, first thing she said was, um, don't write about it, don't talk about it, um, don't post videos about it because the government is going gonna, is, is gonna to watch you and track you down and, you know, nasty things are going to happen to us. And she's like, you know, she, Monica's like, we have kids, you know, we have our family members, you can't jeopardize us, don't, don't talk about this stuff online. <laughs> so did you go through a similar fear like that? Or you were yeah, afraid course, to speak out? Every time, every time I have a fear like that, I think, okay, I'm, I've been programmed to be afraid. Mm -hmm. Like a fear, fear is what we're supposed to feel. Mm -hmm. And I have to like check myself every time I have that fear of something, okay, this fear is a mine. Like this is, this is what I'm supposed to feel, to be afraid of the system. But I mean, I feel like at the end of the day, like this, this awakening or whatever you want to call it is happening at the, at the same rate 
as sort of like the um, the madness on the other side. Like it's like a race to the finish. Like this is unstoppable at this point. This is why someone like um, David Cameron is speaking in front of the United Nations saying conspiracy theorists need to be dealt with as harshly as ISIS. Like that's a terrifying thing for him to say. Yeah. But that just shows how afraid they are of us. Mm -hmm. This is this is unstoppable at this point. We are like a, a, it's like a mudslide or a, an avalanche. It's just built. It's just gaining momentum as it goes down. And you know, if we if we if we decide to be afraid now, then we're letting them win. And we have to just stay diligent. I mean, I've. But to answer your question, yes, I have been afraid before. I mean, as times we re release a video or something, and we're like, wow, we're really <sighs> we're going there. But then at the end of the day, it's also like, hey, it's also just a funny video, and it's. It is what it is, and it's important. I mean, I'd rather live my life with integrity, you know, than than to say I was too afraid to say anything. So I, I, I feel like it's. I want to look back on my life and say I did the best I possibly could with the time that I had and the resources available. And I just remind myself of that whenever I get afraid, because fear is the enemy. Yeah, yeah, and I also think about you know my kids, and if I were to not speak out and self censor. What kind of lesson am I teaching them? What kind of message am I sending, right? <laughs> to be afraid of those who, right. who have the guns, right? Those in authority. Be afraid of those people that can hurt you. <laughs> and, I mean, one of, the, one, thing, one of the next big steps is it, somehow reaching the ones who hold the guns for the criminals. I mean, the police and the, and the soldiers, they're the ones who would actually carry out this sort of brutality. And they're in our boat, you know? They're in the 99%. They're just the front but they're in our boat if we can reach them game over like everything changes if they realize if they remember that they're people and they're in debt just like everybody else and they're paying their taxes and they're getting screwed by the man like everybody else and they take they stop thinking with the uniform that they're wearing then we win i mean period like we win so i don't know i i trust i i, I live in life with a lot of trust trust in myself and trust of my you know, I, I really am actively trying to put, you know, think from my heart rather than from my brain, right? And I feel like you can't necessarily go wrong when you're in that boat. And if somehow the government wants to take me out, that would be really unfortunate for me and for a lot of people. But I don't think that way. I mean, I can't. I can't. I just can't allow that thought to be in, in my consciousness because I feel like I'm doing, I'm doing the right thing. And that's that. Yeah, you're right. I mean, I mean, Lar there's a uh, Larkin Rose. I don't know if you follow any of his stuff. Uh, I like Larkin Rose. Yeah, he makes some awesome videos, and you know, one of his um, one of my favorite lines of his is, you know, I'm not afraid of the Maos of the Stalins or the Hitlers, right? Because they, they directly they don't kill many people, right? It's only the the order followers, right? The people that work under them, do their bidding, and respect them as authority or near godlike deity status, yeah, and kill millions of people in the name of government, right? Those are the people committing the true atrocities that we read about in the history books. Those right. are the people that are misguided, <laughs> that think that they're they're defending freedom or, you know, spreading democracy or <laughs> you know. Yeah. And granted, like everything I just said, I mean, it's no simple task, obviously, like getting no. through them. And then I mean you can see it playing out. It's almost like a script being written, right? Like we have these things like Ferguson or the Trayvon Martin case, the media really, really pumps life into these stories to really make it seem like it's all racism, mm -hmm. like it's a white cop versus a black guy. Yeah, yeah. It's not. I mean, it's, a poli it's the police state versus the people. Mm -hmm. but they're wanting us to think it's racism so that we end up getting really mad at the cops. But the cops are just carrying out their orders. So they're just distancing, they're just furthering the gap between the cops and the people. So that's trip very challenging. But that's you can see their intention when they do stuff like that. You can see them trying to make so then the cops are on the defensive, right? The cops are more afraid of the people. People are more afraid of the cops, more angry at the cops. So we have to I don't know, you know, I don't really know how to solve that problem, but it is very important to deal with the police with love and be gentle and not call them the enemies because they're just like you said carrying out their orders. Yeah, yeah, the the uh, <clears throat> the phrase or the sentence "just doing my job" is one of the most dangerous <laughs> phrases <laughs> in the history of the world. You know how many atrocities has been committed with the excuse of just doing my job, <laughs> All right? <laughs> right, and this police state is so scary. I mean, they 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 want us to be so afraid of you know Islamic 
extremists and terrorism and Muslims in general. Meanwhile, you're about, mm, what, a thousand times more likely to get killed by a police officer in your neighborhood than you are by a terrorist. I mean, let's, give me a break. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A, a, a Muslim, like an ocean away, um, you know, with sandals is supposed to be more frightening than a police officer here that, you know, can disarm you at will, can club you, can tase you, can cage you, can, you know, can even confiscate your property, you know, enter your property without your, you know, consent and... Uh, I don't know if you heard about civil asset forfeiture, but that's another really nasty uh, method of confiscation of uh, of, of um, you know home or of cars. Just that's that, and that's related to the war on drugs, right? Just with any suspicion of drug related activities or possession, you know the police can come and basically evict the people from their home. It doesn't matter if they you know paid off their mortgage after decades of hard work, right? They just evict the people, and all of a sudden. <clears throat> You're fighting to keep your house that you paid off. <laughs> yeah, the game is rigged. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's um, you're right. You know, it's it's not it's not an easy task for us, and uh, and I think that that's that's one of the beautiful things about what we are trying to do is that you know it's it's something that's so difficult, which is one of the reasons why so few people venture down this path, and uh, you know, like you know, all the people that have died. You know, pursuing like I see, there's a, a picture of John Lennon. Is, it, is that John Lennon back there? Oh yeah, John yeah, Lennon. Right? Yeah, right. <laughs> Some of the people yeah. that have died, yes. died like just promoting peace. You know, in the world, like how revolutionary is that? Peace and love, right? <laughs> right. He had he had influence, and yeah. they took him out. You know, I mean, I mean, it's scary, but uh, but then again, I'm not really afraid because you know I, I consider myself a small time person. Like, why would they target me? And you know, if if the government the, the government doesn't really have resources to target all the people that are, you know, trying to be truth-telling or activists, you know. So they, I, I, the way I look at it, they target the high profile. Like, like you know, there's many people that don't pay their taxes, but, they, but not all of them get, you know, um, jailed or caged, right? But Wesley Snipes did, right? And he's yeah. a big name. So, and so when you tell people about taxation is theft and that we should, you know, why are we paying that, right? And they say, well, you're going to go to jail. But <laughs> look at Wesley Snipes. <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah but but they just don't have the resources that's the thing that's the thing people realize it's it, it's you know the government is largely a, it's a hologram it's an illusion yep you know it's like the the wizard of oz right behind his uh his pyrotechnics is just an old man pushing levers and pushing buttons <laughs> exactly what it is it's yep. just, just twisted old men so um and i mean look at them i mean they're they're not happy people like these <laughs> these old crusty bankers and whatnot i mean they they look like they're dying from the inside out. Like their skin is hanging off their bones. They look like miserable cretins. Like they are not happy. It doesn't matter how much wealth they're sitting on or how much they've obtained or how much they're screwing the people. Like they're wearing it in the way they look. Like they are not happy. They are evil. Evil 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 beings, psychopaths if you will. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, I mean, you know, to to think that people that, you know, the government will willingly um limit itself. I think that's that's one of the delusions that a lot of minarchists have is that you know we're just going to vote we're just going to vote for the government to <laughs> to vote itself into oblivion, you know, into irrelevancy. Mm. <laughs> I don't know what that means. How would that how would that happen? You know, do you think the government would provide resources to delete itself? Of course not. <laughs> Why would it do that? Right. <laughs> you know, historically every government expands 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 and you know robs the people of their of their wealth and of their productivity until the people can support it no longer and and they just you know refuse to fund it refuse to participate and and that's it the game is over like you said right over. yeah wow yeah totally <laughs> so yeah so i just um i'm really i i'm i'm optimistic you know i i went through my phase of pessimism and dark darkness and and now I'm, I remain optimistic, you know. I just try to talk to people, as many people as I can when I meet them on the street, you know. Uh, yeah. although, although I don't call myself, like, like I said, I don't call myself labels and anarchists or anything, but I, uh, I definitely try to spark up conversation and get people to think, ask questions, you know. Because, Absolutely, yeah. You know, you, you want people to go home and you, like, plant the seed in their mind, right? And hopefully they're going to um, take that. It's going to become something significant in their mind, you know. Oh, that's the hope. Yeah, that, that's Absolutely. what you and that's what you guys are trying to do with your with your videos, right? 
plant the seed. Yeah, yeah, we're trying. Yeah, exactly. Like I said, we're just trying to serve it up on a platter. We're not trying to tell you how to think. We're just calling attention to something that people are afraid to call attention to, and present it in a way that's digestible and can offer an opening for someone to do their own research and come up with their own conclusions. Awesome. So, um, all right. So, I don't want to take up any of your time, any more of your time. So, uh, once you uh, let people know how they can reach you, your work, how they, sure. how they can reach you. Yeah, yeah. Um, our channel is on YouTube. It's YouTube.com/slash The Joy Camp. Our website is www.thejoycamp.com, and you can like us on Facebook. We post rather regularly, and we have a Twitter um, at The Joy Camp. And you can also get in touch with me. I mean, our email address, we respond to every personal email we get, or we try to anyway, at the or thejoycamp at gmail.com. And you can talk to me on Facebook. I'm easily easy to reach. I'm a nice guy, you know. Don't be shy. <laughs> single, huh? single white male, right? <laughs> oh, I, I'm, a, I'm single, you know. <laughs> nice. Straight, but I'm single. Um, if you haven't watched our videos yet, please, I, I implore you to watch our videos. And, you know... Oh, you can also donate to our cause, which is very important because we are doing everything on a shoestring budget. So if you want to throw a couple, if you like what we do and you want to throw a couple dollars our way, every dollar we get goes towards production, uh, not in our pockets. Um, and if you like our videos, please share them. That's the most important thing. Share them with your friends. If you like them, that's one thing, but like them and pass them on. I mean, that's what we're doing it for. We're doing it to spread the word. We don't want to just be the outlet for people who are already awake to have a laugh and then go back to their lives. We want people to use these videos to bridge the gap with those who are not awake yet. So please share the videos. You'll see you'll see people responding, I promise. Awesome. Do you guys accept Bitcoin? You know, we don't yet. And after going to this anarchist festival in Acapulco, I think it's time we looked into it because there seems to be a real big movement in that direction and we would be wise to get on the bandwagon. Oh, oh, t- but not yet. Not- yeah, answer's not yet, but yes, yeah, soon. Tell me about Anarchopulco. I, uh, I'm curious to hear about it. Uh, it was a blast. Uh, it was incredible, actually. I mean, I, I unfortunately got food poisoning for a couple of days, so I was out oh, of commission man. two days every week. But that aside, that sucked. I, it was great. Um, I mean, I got to hang out with like Luke Rudowski, who is a friend of mine. So seeing him was great. I collaborated in a couple of videos with him and Dan Dix of Press for Change, and um, was it Press for Change? Press for Truth. Press for Truth, yeah. And James Corbett of the Corbett Report, um, and then a lot of really good people. And it was actually really validating to have so many people come up to me who were familiar with Joy Camp, and thank me for the work because it's you know sometimes you don't feel like anybody's seeing it because I'm just sitting here in LA in my apartment and putting videos out there and not knowing who's who they're reaching so to see firsthand that people are really being affected by it in, in a positive way and responding to it was uh, significant and it gave me a lot of fuel to keep going um, so all in all it was just a great experience I'm very grateful to the people who enabled my trip because I didn't. I mean, I didn't pay for it. So people, people who thought I should be there, brought me out there, which I'm. I mean, I have so much gratitude for. And it was just a. It was a great week with a lot of really great people from all over the world, and we collaborated on a video. I, I produced a video out there that I think is going to be, possibly our most um, profound uh, video to date. We produ- I produced something out there that I'm so proud of, and I, I used a lot of particip- a lot of people were involved. Maybe like 40 people or so were interested in being involved with it, and I just think it's going to be amazing. So I'll let you know when that comes out. Uh, hopefully within the next month or so. But yeah, all in all, great experience. Um, I'm. They said they're going to do it again, and I'd love to go back. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, yeah. Just to go back to your point, positive. Feedback from from listeners is really a great encouragement for continuing work you know that, that we do right because yeah you're, you're right you don't know who's listening or who's reading you know the blogs or the articles right and to hear people say you know I read your stuff I really liked it <laughs> yeah think- it's very validating because you know going being one of the awake ones I mean not to sound like an elitist or anything but it can be lonely sometimes because you feel like you're just surrounded by people who don't get it so to be in an environment where everybody gets it. And everybody also appreciates 
the work that you've been putting out there for three years, it's uh, it's a very gratifying and humbling also feeling. I mean, it's a really it's beautiful, and I'm very I'm so happy that I went. Awesome, awesome. All right, so um, so can you can you give a small uh, message to the, my listeners like before we sign off? Um, any uh, anything that comes to mind that you would like them to hear? Sure. Well, I, I did a speech in or at Anarchapulco uh, that I called "You Are the Cure," and that was the theme of my speech. And it, and like I was saying before, the change starts with you. So that's my message. The change starts with you. Be mindful of your decisions and be kind to the people you meet, because we're all in this together. And we must heal ourselves. If you want to heal the world, you have to heal yourself. So every time you, you reach for a Big Mac and you have that little voice in your head that's like, ah, screw it, that's the system winning. You should remember that. So be mindful. Be strong. Have willpower. Get that system out of your system. You are the cure. Yeah. We need a, uh, a philosophical detox, right? <laughs> we need a lot of detox. Yeah. We're, we're, you know, we're, we're infected with this. It's a, it's, it, it runs deep. I mean, it's a rarely complex, intricate system that's been affecting us from day one in our lives and our parents' lives from day one. So it's very, it's thorough. So just stay diligent, stay active, don't give up, and just keep healing yourself, healing your body. As within, so without. You know, if you want to change the world, you must be willing to change yourself. That's awesome. my message to the people. Well said. <clears throat> yeah, I tell people, you know, right after you, right after we finish. Uh, 12 years of uh, indoctrination in the public schools, you know, that's when the, the, uh, the, the process starts of ex ex expelling the statist excrement, intellectual excrement from our brains. Right. Res <laughs> the residue. <of> <laughs> so, and also, I think Voltaire said it, said it well when he said, uh, if you want to change the world, first tend to your own garden. Right? Absolutely. <laughs> exactly. It, starts, it always starts with the individual, right? Exactly. Always. Yep. Well, and awesome. do something, and then do something with the information. You know, do if you think if you think that you, you're funny and you could be funnier than us, by all means, do it. Like, do it. Just do something. Mm -hmm. Do it. Put put. Do do something. Uh, that's my other advice. Do something. Yeah, that's the beauty of the internet, right? Anybody can be, um, you know, can can put their content out there for people to see, right? Yep. And uh, and I wonder how much. How much longer that ability is going to stay now that there's net neutrality passed, right? <laughs> we're going to get it. It'll stay. Yeah, no, we're going to keep going. They can't shut us down at this yeah, point. Yeah, There's, I mean, I'm it's too strong. I'm hoping that these, uh, you know, unelected uh, old men, you know, who just passed this these ridiculous legislation, which I think harbors back, you know, it, it goes back to like 1934 Telecommunications Act, they're like linking the internet with the telephone. <laughs> So it's completely outdated, but but yeah, mm. <laughs> awesome, Benny. Thank you very much for the conversation. Hey, thanks for having me. I appreciate Pleasure. it. So yeah. um, this is Peaceful Anarchism on the Voluntary Virtues Network uh, and the Conscious Resistance YouTube channel. Wishing all of you have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye.